Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to talk about design patterns and more specifically factory design pattern. But before jumping on to factory design pattern, let's quickly see that what are design patterns, why should we use them, what are different kind of design patterns and then we will see factory design patterns with an example in detail. So let's start. Design patterns are solutions to commonly occurring problems in software design. They are not finished designs which can be directly transformed into the code, instead they are templates a description for how to solve a problem and they can be used in different situations. And don't confuse design pattern with architectures. These are two different things. So in interviews, I have seen candidates telling design patterns when asked about architectures and vice versa. So when I ask about design pattern, they say that they have worked on MVVM, Viper, MVC, MVP. And when I ask about architecture, they tell about singleton, observer. So these are two different things. Don't put one in place of another. Architecture is for the entire application, that how your application is built, the overall structure of the application, the overall architecture of the application, while design patterns are for the smaller modules. You can treat it as design patterns eventually contribute to your architecture. So for example, you can have singleton for some specific module, you can have observer pattern for some other module, you can have facade for some other module, which in totality will make the MVVM, Viper, MVC, MVB, whatever you are dealing with. So architecture is for entire application and design patterns are for specific modules. Don't confuse them. And the second point is that why should we use design patterns? So design patterns makes your code more manageable, more scalable, easily testable. It breaks into the modules. Many times the issues that you encounter at a very later stage of development are identified right at the beginning of the development when you use design patterns. So these patterns have evolved over time looking at those issues, the potential problems, those situations and considering everything so there should be no doubt about why to use a design pattern. It will make your life easy. Apart from this, design pattern also helps in communicating with other developers. So let's say a new developer joined your team. Now he or she is not aware about the code. Obviously new developer will deep dive into the code to understand that how it has been written. But if you say that you have used a particular design pattern for this particular module, and if he or she is aware about that design pattern, then it will get really easy for the new developer to get the hang of the code. So if you tell them that you have used Singleton for this particular module and they already know that okay in Singleton you will be having a shared instance and how it works, it will be really easy to pick up the code, to pick up the flow. They won't invest their time in understanding the design pattern or the architecture. Instead they will focus on understanding the business logic and that is what you want. So if you use design pattern, proper architectures, then it will eventually speed up the development process. Of course they are important for the interview but I would say that they are even more important after the interview. So let's say that you have cleared the interview and you have been offered the role of tech lead, architect, senior software developer and you have been asked to design a module. At that point in time, design patterns will come into the play. You will be evaluated on these skills of yours. How efficient system have you designed? What design patterns you have used? What architecture have you used? And eventually how manageable, how scalable your code is. Your team will be following the pattern that you have decided. So then the importance becomes even more. Now let's see that what are the different types of design patterns. This will be really quick. I won't deep dive into each of the design pattern. Instead, we will just see that what are the different categories of design pattern, how are they categorized, and then we'll focus on factory design pattern. So the first category in which the design patterns are categorized is creational design patterns. Now creational design patterns are those patterns which focus on creation of the object, how an object is being instantiated. Their sole purpose, their entire focus is on the how part of the object creation. Now it might appear very lame and very easy to you that we can directly create an object by using the class name and then parenthesis, what is the need of a pattern. But you will understand this when we'll be discussing about the factory pattern in a minute. So these are few of the creational design patterns. There are more than these five. Now let's see the next category that is structural patterns. Structural patterns are those patterns which are concerned about the composition of a class or an entity in general. They are concerned about how a class should be composed so that it eventually contributes in building a larger structure. So for example, facade. The literal meaning of word facade is the front of the building. So when you look at the front of the building, you are only looking at the building from outside. You are not concerned about how plumbing work has been done. You are not worried about that how power supply has been managed, how wiring has been done. You are only seeing it from the front. So it focus on the composition of classes that should eventually contribute in a larger structure. It concentrates on identifying the relationships between the entities. Let's not go too much into the details of structural design patterns and let's see our third category that is behavioral patterns. Behavioral patterns concentrates on the interaction of the objects and their responsibility. 
It says that objects should be easily able to talk to each other, but at the same time, they should be loosely coupled. So this was the gist about the classification of design patterns and I'll try to cover each one of them but for this video let's focus on factory design pattern. Factory design pattern falls under the category of creational design patterns and so it focuses on how to create the objects. So it says that there should be an interface, there should be a protocol which talks about the object creation but the subclass or the entity that is confirming to that particular protocol should be responsible for identifying that what kind of object is to be created. And I understand that from the definition, it is not at all clear. So let's take an example. So assume that in your application, you need a profile view, which should display the user's profile. Now the design of that profile view can change depending on certain factors. Product can come up with some weird requirement. They guys can ask you to change the look and feel of the view, depending on some weird criteria. It can be some festival, some event that let's say the Christmas is coming, so the profile should have the Christmas look and feel. Or they can come up with some concept of privileged users, pro users. So there should be a simple layout, a simple view for the normal users and there should be a fancy view for the pro users, for the privileged users. Basically different design depending on different situations, different criteria. And there can be 65,000 reasons for it. Now what factory pattern says here is that you should be having some kind of factory let's say profile view factory you will just tell that factory that you want this particular kind of profile view and it will return it like that now you are not concerned about how that view is being created what is the underneath implementation of that how is the object is being created what is the complexity involved in the object creation and everything else you are not aware about that you are not concerned about that you just ask the factory to give us the profile view and it returned to it now you are getting the profile view for the blue color theme, for the red color theme, for festival theme, for any festival, for any other event, you are getting the same profile view. Of course the theme is different, that is your requirement, but the profile view is having the same components. It has a profile image, it has a label for the username, it has some ratings of the user, it has some other preferences of the user. Those components are same, the theme has changed or whatever changes that you wanted for that particular profile view have been made, but you got the profile view object. Now this is what is being done by the profile view factory. Let's see that how it can be done. So what I mean to say is that let's see that how can you implement factory pattern. So let's start with what we want. We want to have a factory that should return as the profile view. So let's create one. So let's create our factory class, say class profile view factory. And then there should be a method which we will call and it will return us the profile view. So let's create one, say font get profile view. Now we want that we should be able to pass a type that we want a normal profile or we want a privileged profile, a superstar profile. So let's create a type first. Let's, let's create an enum for that. Say profile type. And for now, let's just put two cases, say normal. And the second would be say privileged. So this get profile view will get the type of the profile that will be profile type and based on this it should return a profile view so let's create a profile view first but what will be a profile view will it be a class no we actually don't want to return that concrete implementation we want to return a protocol an interface so let's create one so let's say protocol say profile view and then this profile view protocol should have those things which generally or which all of our profile views should have. So it should have an image view for the profile image. So let's go for it where profile image view and this will be a UI image view. What else it can have? It can have a label for the username. So let's say where username label. And it can have the coins, the balance that user is having, if that is the use case. I mean, obviously these things will change depending on the use case. So let's just consider one. So I would say it, uh, say coins label maybe. This will be again a get or set. So this is a basic structure of what profile view will be having. There can be a lot more, but let's just consider only these three for now. Now we'll be returning this profile view from our get profile view method. And inside that method, we will have the checks for the profile type. So if I go for switch and switch on type, which will be either normal or it can be say privileged. 
in either of the cases we need to return a profile view now comes the point that actually what will be returned i mean the protocol has been set the interface is set we have set the blueprint we have set the guidelines now the concrete implementation so for the concrete implementation we can have the classes we can have the views for it so let's say normal profile view which will be a ui view and it should also consider to our profile view say and we can have one for our privileged users so say class privileged profile view this will also be a ui view and profile view and if you want to impose this inheritance of the ui view you can do that through the protocol so if i write ui view here and then if i try removing it from here i'll get an error saying that this normal profile view must inherit ui view let's see what it is saying profile view requires that normal profile view inherit from ui view so let's fix it let's inherit from the ui view and the inheritance should come before the confirmants same should be done here and then there's the initialization part of these views that i'm not covering here because this video is not focusing on how to create the views instead from these cases now we can return our different views that we are having so we are having a normal profile view here and we have a, a privileged profile view here so we can return it from here so basically our profile view factory is creating our profile views and we are directly getting it by just calling this method get profile view now there can be even more complexities now consider that your company has got the projects from two different football clubs let's say barcelona and let's say real madrid and you are asked to write a framework that should be responsible for creating the profile views for these two different applications one for barcelona and one for real madrid now obviously both the applications will have different theme and considering this use case for those applications that there will be a superstar user and there will be a normal user so basically there will be a different superstar user a different view for the user for barcelona and the different view for the superstar user of real madrid so basically each application has two views and in totality you should have four views now how to deal with this scenario now if you create one more protocol for that to which your factory confirms so what i mean to say is that if you do something like this protocol profile view factory and let's say protocol not the best way but it's fine for now and in this protocol you define that your factory must have the method for get profile view so if i go for func get profile view and you mention it here that it should receive a profile type it should also receive the user object let's say i'm not having user as of now but yeah that's fine for the example it's just an example and then all of your profile view factory should confirm to this particular protocol so if i go for let's say barcelona profile view factory which should confirm to profile view factory protocol and then i'll have to write this method that is get profile view so let's first fix this error that is for user so let's say struct user now i need to write implementation for this method so let's go for it and inside that i can have implementation depending on the barcelona similarly i can have a factory for real madrid so this is where protocol comes to rescue so the idea is that you should have the factories which will be responsible for returning the objects to you you can set up protocols you can set up interfaces for imposing the guidelines or minimum set of requirements and then factories can confirm to that particular protocol or i should say that those factories will be returning the object which are confirming to that particular protocol so that way your client end will only receive the object of that particular protocol type and the internal implementation part or i should say that how the object is being created that part will be hidden so once you will start using the factory design pattern you will get to know more about it but the crux is that you should be using design patterns and i already mentioned n number of reasons for that so that's pretty much for this video a new video comes out every weekend so you can consider subscribing to the channel let's write better code together happy coding and stay safe